Guys, congratulations on the film. Thank, Thank you. Again. Um, <laughs> obviously, this film is partly celebrating Disney's 100. And I was thinking about kind of my childhood memories of Disney. And I think the thing that always stuck with me was listening to Robin Williams do The Genie because it was kind of like revolutionary and he did all these amazing things. So I wondered for you, what's the kind of memory from maybe your childhood that has always kind of stuck with you and kind of cemented itself in your in your brain over, over the years? Yeah, for, oh, go ahead. Well, for me, I love pink elephant scene in Dumbo. Mm. I saw it when I was really young. And there's something about it that's just, the color is so vibrant and <laughs> you leave the reality for a second. And that just kind of broadened my mind in terms of what to think visually in storytelling? I would say for me, um, because it was the first film I saw and it made such an impression, that was Pinocchio. And uh, I saw it when I was four or five. And that song, When You Wish Upon a Star, is just amazing. And it just, I don't know, it just speaks so, so deeply. Jiminy Cricket singing that song. And anyway. Yeah, I think that ties, ties so in nicely, moment. doesn't it, yeah. to your, to your, to your that's film. Why we, that's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I know that the film obviously celebrates 100 years of Disney. I know that you spoke before about kind of the little nods to everything else. Without mm -hmm. spoiling too much, what's your favorite kind of thing that you've snuck in? Is there something that you've gone, oh, I can't believe, you know, really happy that we managed to get this little <laughs> reference in or this little nod to one of the, the many, many films over the, over the years? I mean, one of the things that we, we did want to make sure first is that the story was solid before we started layering in all the, all the eggs. We didn't want anything to um, get Dis in the, from the, the way story. of the story. So they're just, they're just, these nods are all, all over the place. Um, I think our, one of our, we keep sharing sort of the favorite. Um, it's at the very end of the movie. It's after the credits roll. Mm -hmm. Don't want to say what it is. It's a wonderful surprise, um, but that's that's kind of my my favorite. Yeah. In terms of where you started with this tour, now where it's finished, I know you obviously go through so many different kind of variations and stuff like that. Was there has there much changed from when you the first kind of genesis of it to the finished film, or is it pretty much the story that you guys had, had envisioned from the from the beginning? Because I know things can can change quite a lot. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because the film started with the Genesis idea of uh, a person wishing upon a star and star falls down, right? But that is the, the, the plot. So we dive in along the journey of thinking about what do we want to say about a journey of a person pursuing their dreams, the way that's specific to, to the story, to our life experiences, and also to speak to Walt's um, story, of his perseverance to get Snow White. Mm -hmm. Made you know we look at that and like to how, what keeps you keeping believing your 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 dream even though mm -hmm. everyone is doubting that idea you know what keeps you coming back up and keep trying again. In terms of I mean Disney I mean over the years it's it's kind of done so many things and brought animation forward so many in so many amazing ways. What do you th do you think there's a secret to it or do you think it's just because over the years there's been so many amazing kind of filmmakers that have come in and, and stamped themselves on on Disney history. Do you think, that, is there a secret to its continued kind of <laughs> success or do you think it's just because it's just kind of the magic of Disney that just endures? Well, I think, you know, we're all drawn to Disney for a certain reason. That was sort of the, the genius of, of Walt. And um, I think that he, he was an innovator mm -hmm. and a lot of people may not know, but he was always striving to do something new. He, had, he was so curious about new technology and new ways of telling stories. And I think we, uh, follow that and we sort of are inspired by that all the time so we're always looking for a, a fresh way of telling the story and um, but still still retaining the heart and the 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 magic of you know of Walt's Walt's genius yeah I love Star as a, as a character and I think you mentioned last night the premiere the difficulty in terms of having a character that doesn't say anything it's all about motion and about you know yeah. the, the movement and everything else which kind of goes full circle back to the old Mickey Mouse okay. cartoons. How mm -hmm. difficult is that to, to bring to life? Because I can imagine there's immense challenges because it's, it's all dependent on animation rather than performance with Ariana or Chris or yeah. anybody else in yeah. between. But that pantomime aspect of this character fits what Star represents so well. You know, Star is a, it represents the energy of hope, inspiration, possibility. It's like when you have a creative energy, you know, an idea, and then you feel this sense of like, 
I need to be active and do something. A lot of time you're afraid, if, you know, the thing that you want to do, is it going to be anything or not? But this energy that pushes you forward, let you take a leap, is star. And a lot of times you don't really understand that feeling very well. There's no words to it. <laughs> and for Asha to not have someone there and just tell her exactly what she needs to do, it allows her character to grow and be challenged. And, and the audience hopefully will have a fun time reading into what Star is trying to say to Asha. Yeah. Do you have a favorite song in, in this one? Because uh, there's, so, there's so many, it's hard to like, it's like picking a favorite child, isn't exactly. it? You can't, you can't do it. But is there one that's kind of been kind of an earworm that you haven't been able to get out your, your brain? If they're you all, it is they're all earworms. Um, <laughs> oh boy, it's hard to say. It's, it's more about where you are during the day, what kind of day you're having. Um, I love, um, I can talk about, you know, when I'm feeling quintessentially Disney, uh, yeah. I'm a star yeah. with all the, in the forest mm -hmm. and those beautiful colors and the animals coming to life and the trees coming to life. Um, love that. And then, uh, cause I have three boys, uh, the times that I feel like an unappreciated parent, I would say this is the thanks I get. So that's the one that's been in my brain. For some reason, it's just Chris Pine's voice to say, this is the thanks I get. If I ever interview him, I'm going to have to say it. It's like a proper horrible earworm. Relatable. <laughs> uh, guys, I wish you all the best with the film. Thank you so much for your time again. Thank Pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, hey you guys. Hey you guys. Hey, hey, hey. That's what they all say. Hey you guys. Hey you guys.